Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Friday, February 7th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, did Jay Leno's criticisms of Obama contribute to his downfall? Then, a man who survived communism blasts Oregon lawmakers for attempting gun registration. And David Knight analyzes the consequences of a police chief who swears to uphold his oath to the Constitution. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, don't ask, don't tell is back. Not for gays in the military, it's President Obama's new policy for questions about Libya. Don't ask, don't tell. Now, despite really high ratings, Jay Leno said goodbye to his long-running late-night talk show last night. But was the fact that he was using his platform to criticize Obama the reason that he may have been fired from NBC? That's what some are speculating, because while most late-night comics took superficial swipes at Obama, Leno was the only one who incorporated conservative talking points like Benghazi Gate, or he would include the scandals like the AP wiretapping controversy, the NSA spying, as well as Leno's call to close down the IRS during his Tonight Show monologues. Now, it's widely acknowledged that Leno writes his own jokes. So just four months after his second Benghazi Gate monologue, it was announced that Leno was being replaced by Jimmy Fallon. Now, he's repeatedly ripped on Obama for the disastrous Obamacare rollout. He even signed off his final show by remarking, and the worst thing about losing this job is I'm no longer covered by NBC. Now I'll have to sign up for Obamacare. Now, NBC's decision to replace Leno can't be explained with falling ratings. He was at the top of the pile of the late night talk shows, and lately his ratings have been through the roof. So did Comcast Corporation, who just recently bought out General Electric's 49% share in NBC, and who also donated over $300,000 to Obama's 2012 presidential campaign, have anything to do with Leno's exit? So I believe that we will be getting to the truth of that matter sooner than later, much like it's now being revealed that the State Department does, in fact, have something to do with the Ukraine. They're definitely meddling in their internal affairs. This is now due to some audio that allegedly was hacked by the Russians and posted on YouTube. It's providing irrefutable evidence that the State Department is meddling in the affairs of the Ukraine. Since the Maidan Square protests began in November, evidence has been piling up showing that the usual actors are involved. The Soros NGOs, which specialize in color revolutions, USAID, the National Endowment for Democracy, and Freedom House. The Russian government has denied any role in surreptitiously recording the conversation between the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for the European and Eurasian Affairs and the U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine. The recording doesn't reveal anything especially sinister, but it does, however, show the displeasure of the State Department with the way things are going in Ukraine. Newland can be heard saying, F the EU, expressing her anger that the EU is not moving fast enough with regime change in Ukraine, and her plan is to get the UN involved in the process. Now, the audio reveals how the State Department basically calls the shots at the internationalist organization. And this is in spite of the fact that Secretary of State John Kerry has been decrying any foreign meddling in the Ukraine's internal affairs. It's clear that the State Department is virtually managing the entire process. Now, we've all been made aware by the Russian authorities that they are, in fact, spying on the hotel bathrooms of the journalists who are there covering the Olympics. So I wouldn't put it past the Russians for spying on their, the U.S. ambassador and the secretary of state there. But what I thought was hilarious was that uh, Newland said that it was shocking that they would spy on them. Yes, because we, the U.S. is the only one that's allowed to do that, of course. But here we have, you know, the order out of the Chaos Club in D.C. They don't really care who is responsible for pushing the Ukraine away from Russia. They don't really care how the job gets done because their end game is to just bring the country into this IMF, World Bank austerity scenario that we're already seeing in Greece and its plan for Spain and, of course, the southern countries of Europe. So you can actually hear that audio up on Infowars.com. It's pretty interesting what she has to say about some other characters there. But those who are old enough 
to recall a government kind of falling under tyranny are speaking out against what's happening here in America. And it's probably pretty important that we listen up. So this is Manuel Martinez. He narrowly escaped Cuba in 1962 after being imprisoned for opposing Fidel Castro. He passionately defended the Second Amendment in front of Oregon lawmakers Thursday during a public hearing on proposed gun control legislation. Don't sell me this. A very powerful man tried to sell me this 50-something years ago. I didn't buy it. This is Marxism, plain and clear. They put this dog and pony show saying, hey, we're going to protect you. No, what they did it was enslave a country. They destroyed the country in the same way that this country is going to be destroyed if we continue in this round. Now, Senate Bill 1551 proposes to massively expand background checks to basically every private sale. So we're supposed to somehow believe that this is going to force criminals to voluntarily submit to a background check. But this is just even more evidence of states moving to create these gun registration and confiscation bills. And that's why it's so important for us to heed the words of people who have actually lived through watching the assassination of innocent civilians by their government. People are always criticizing you if you compare Obama to Hitler or if you remind people that Stalin took the guns and Mao took the guns. But these are recent historical events where very intelligent people, quite possibly your grandparents, were duped into democide by their government. So that's why it's so important that we listen to people like this, heed their warning, no history or we'll be doomed to repeat it. Now, this is just coming on the heels of a current New York mayor who says that he has publicly announced his decision to leave the mayors against illegal guns because the gun control group demands an all-out confiscation of guns from law-abiding citizens. In an announcement published by his city's newspaper, Poughkeepsie, New York Mayor John Katzik said he quit the group after realizing it was simply a vehicle from Michael Bloomberg to promote his personal gun control agenda. He said, I don't believe, never have believed, and never will believe that public safety is enhanced by encroaching on our right to bear arms, and I will not be a part of any organization that does. Depriving law-abiding citizens of their right to own firearms only makes them more vulnerable. So it's so refreshing to see elected officials serving their constituents while respecting the Bill of Rights. Much like the police chief Shane Harger, who we reported on last week, he was detained by the FBI and the TSA while he was on his way to an Oath Keepers meeting. And then when he returned from that, he was subsequently let go and his whole police department disbanded because he upheld his oath to respect and honor the Constitution. So be sure to watch that report. It's very important. Share it with everyone that you can. It's coming up at the end of the show. Now, I bet that one of the warning signs that Manuel Martinez would say to watch out for in a coming dictatorship would be not only gun control, but also an out of control police state. Now, pretty much everything you do can get you arrested, even if it's not against the law. Now, instead of searching for actual criminals, Kentucky State Police will be on the lookout for people who eat while they drive as part of Operation Raid. Now, this is despite the fact that eating while driving isn't banned in Kentucky. Operation Remove Aggressive, Impaired, and Distracted Drivers starts this month and will remain active for one year. Police will be pulling people over and subjecting them to safety checkpoints. Despite the fact that no laws exist, banning, eating, and driving, and not to mention the fact that this is a total violation of the Fourth Amendment. So this, this is what we have to look forward to. I mean, this is what they're going to try and do everywhere, set up these safety checkpoints. These things aren't even against the law. They're just going to keep pushing, 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 violating your rights, and just seeing how much they can get away with, how much you'll consent to. And as we continue to remind you here week after week, do not consent to them violating your rights. That's why you've got to know your rights. And of course, this also further underscores how the main duty of our police officers isn't to protect and serve and, and go out and catch criminals. It is about revenue generation and control. So we need to keep, keep these good cops like police chief Shane Harger and get rid of the rest of the guys.
Now, the FAA is investigating a potential illegal drone use at the site of a crash. Now, this was according to a police report that was obtained by Fox Connecticut. They said officers spotted a drone flying over the scene of a crash in which the bodies were still in the car. This is now raising safety and privacy concerns with a Hartford attorney who says, how do we balance this new technology? Do we allow more of an intrusion into more traditional private moments like a tragic car accident? Or do we say, well, this is a new technology and the public is just going to have to adapt? According to FAA regulations, drones can't be operated for commercial use and according to the Hartford police, the presence of a drone at a crime scene for journalistic purposes is in violation of FAA regulations. But of course, that is the big dilemma. How are we gonna be using the drones? How, how do all these rules work now in this day and age when we've got Google Glass, people have these things strapped to their face, so they're basically recording everything, uploading your biometrics into the cloud and storing it for Eric Schmidt to not past the creepy line with, as he's promised. So, I mean, this is the big dilemma. And now they're seeing how these things are going to affect them and their ability to police. And of course, their ability to get away with crimes. Even though, of course, when they are caught on camera, they do seem to be getting away with crimes anyway. Be sure to sign up for a PrisonPlanet.tv membership. Support the info war. We're still running that special. You can get five months free when you sign up for an annual subscription. Now coming up, Jakari Jackson attended a local gun rally here and ran into Adam Kokesh. See what happens right after this. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formulation fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. I'm here in Austin, Texas for a little speaking engagement tonight, book reading. We're going to have some fun at Brave New Books. And I'm really excited to be escorted through Austin for, with Come and Take It. And uh, we're going to be going on a little open carry march here through Austin. For people that appreciate the activism that I've done and, you know, the fact that there are a lot of people who have had their rights taken away, it's nice that, uh, to know that there, there, are, uh, there are those willing to, to stand up and, and at least uh, look out for me while I'm here. And I've got, I feel like I've got uh, the, the best armed escort I could possibly hope for. Last Independence Day, I was at Freedom Plaza, very ironically named, in between the White House and the Capitol in Washington, D.C. And